Well Studio. We welcome now Lance Tolbert, host of the Mississippi Farm Bureau Insurance Company High School Football Scoreboard Show and producer of the Gallo Show. That may be the longest title in the entire company right there. Right? Can you say that fast? No. I, I can't. I try to do that on Friday nights, and I'll dream about it, actually, Gerard. I wake up and go, oh, okay, what is it? I'll say the high school football insurance company. Oh, no, no, that's not right. That's not right. So I have rehearsed it quite a bit. I'm still reading off a note on it though so i got you yeah. well we got it there so it's friday that means high school football across the magnolia state what are we looking at tonight well there are quite a bit of games that are going to be marquee type of games tonight i'll run through quickly the top 10 uh and what they did last week who they have this week starkville coming in at number one they're three and oh beat meridian 42 21 they host uh, number seven, Louisville, and uh, that's going to be a matchup there. That probably is your number one game of the of the week. Uh, happens to be number one versus number seven. Oak Grove comes in at number two. They beat Hattiesburg pretty handily, 32-14. They have MRA. That's another big-time game there. And mm. Oak Grove is my dark horse to win the 7A this year. they just very talented, play uh, very well as a team, loaded offensively, mm. defensively. And then you got MRA, a team that is not scared to play anybody, and they'll play anybody, mm-hmm. and they play anybody well. So this is a game that uh, – I think if you were if you were Oak Grove, you don't want to go into the bricks over there and play that game. So uh, yeah, but you know it, it, you got to play them, and I think MRA is really looking forward to this. So I'm not saying an upset's on the horizon, but that's one to keep your eye on there. Uh, Tupelo has Oxford. Uh, they beat Hernando forty to nothing last week. Oxford uh, dropped one, and so you got a three and O team going up against a two and one team. That again is going to be a battle. And uh, Picayune is number four. They took out Diabril, who's a seven A team, forty two to seven, and did it handily. Uh, they have another big team and another big matchup with number six Gulfport. So you got four and six. So so far in the first you know four or five that we've mentioned, they're all big games, and we haven't even gotten to district stuff yet. Right. So these are these are marquee battles that ought to be fun yeah well and then hey we're going to there with bob and i were just laughing about this one number five madison central three and oh they travel across the lake here and go over to northwest rankin who lost a nail biter last week hmm. you know so uh it, it northwest they they got up 17 nothing and just couldn't hold them so Madison Central's had the luck of the Irish a little bit this year, and Northwest has uh, played well. Northwest very improved. Uh, I'm a Northwest homer. Yeah, there we go. Got a good you know update there from ESPN. Nice. <laughs> um, th- so we're going to move on now to Gulfport, who's two and one six. They've got Picayune, obviously Louisville, who we've talked about, has number one Starkville, Holmes County, and we had Garrison on the phone with us, the quarterback from Holmes County this uh, this past Friday night. And what a gentleman, what a great guy. He was at Ridgeland last year, Holmes County this year. They're off this week, but they beat Canton Academy 59 to 27. Hmm. Pearl, who is much improved as a 10th grader at quarterback, Jack Durr, he was a ninth grader last year. I mean, he looked like he's 120 pounds, but this guy <laughs> would hit anybody, run over anybody. And so Pearl 3 0 has Ridgeland tonight, and they beat Brookhaven. Pearl did 27 20. Ocean Springs beat Northwest Rankin. That was the game that put them in the top 10 and knocked Northwest out of the top 10. 27 24. That was the score of that one. And Ocean Springs has Natchez this week. That's going to be your top 10 for your big schools. Little 10, MRA's number one. Winona number two. Winona has Choctaw County. They beat Kosciuszko 37 17. Winona's got a great team this year, Gerard. And uh, Grenada is another team in that area that's just looks stacked, playing hard. Yeah. Um, Knoxville County, the, the one game that I really, goodness gracious. Uh, one game I wanted to cover there was the Knoxby County Shannon game because Knoxby County's one and two, but they've lost you know some. <laughs> it, one of those things it doesn't get any easier for them, but Knoxby County has played a very tough schedule, and uh, they're going to have uh, Shannon, who's tough. Uh, Knoxby County lost to Starkville forty nine eighteen and West Point fifty to forty, and then they have Louisville next week. But they got Shannon two and one, and Shannon is a uh, is a tough team. So that's going to be another matchup. I think you got to really pay attention to uh, Knoxville County. That's who we're talking about. They're always good, and it's a battle of Highway forty five. Basically, you, you know, you go to Macon. And Shannon right up the road from each other, so that'll be a kind of a uh, north-south battle on 45. Jeff Davis County, 3-0. and They have Columbia, another very good team. Uh, Jeff Davis beat Laurel 23, 26-23 last week, and, and Laurel struggled a bit, but they've done that almost every season early, and then they seem to find their footing. Hartfield has Starkville Academy. They're number five. Jackson Prep, number six. 
in the Little Ten. They have Park Lane, and Park Lane is a solid team this year. Only lost one game. Uh, Union at 3-0 and at 7. They have Newton County. Choctaw County 2-1 and has Winona. Jackson Academy, who's 4-1, and has Lamar School. Lamar School has not lost a game yet. So, again, that's going to be another one of those great battles. And finally, Velma Jackson, who did not play last week, has Jim Hill this week. And I imagine Velma Jackson will probably – uh, put it on Jim Hill. They're, what the, what's the classification of Velma and Jim Hill? I believe they're three A. Is okay. what I believe. Now I'm not. They, they've changed on me. Uh, yeah. But Velma's been a power in that Camden area. So yep. uh, they're they're one of those teams you just don't want to mess with too often and yeah. give, any, give them any room because they are fast and they play hard. Yeah, they do. That that's basically your top ten on both the the Big Ten, the Little Ten. There are quite a few good games out there other than those. I don't want to just run through. And if you have anything you want to add, I would love to hear what you well, have to say. I, I was curious as to know of, of all those games that you that you discussed there. Are there any particular players that are we're, we're focusing on, or or more importantly, that uh, the big time colleges are focusing on that they're prospects? Uh, let's say at the D one level. Well, you got Trey Petty. You know, at Starkville, he's yeah. an excellent quarterback. Not sure where he's going to end up going, but uh, a guy that I believe will have opportunities there. Uh, Oak Grove has a whole list of guys that are you know yeah. whether seniors or juniors and sophomores upcoming uh madison central always has some good players sure there. and so you're looking at not as many of the marquee names at madison central northwest doesn't really have some big names in there picky you obviously chris davis and he's a an oregon commit um you know uh lake cormorant you got uh, you know the uh, the defensive linemen there. I, yep. I didn't mention their game, but they are playing very good football too. I mean, you can just basically go up and down any of these teams and find great players. Uh, Holmes County, uh, and like I said, Garrison Davis over there. He he's starting to hear hmm. uh, they're off this week, but he's had uh, as a uh, at Ridgeland last year and this year just tearing it up. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's one of those things you just kind of, as I told him, you just go out and play football and you don't worry about any of that stuff because if you're as good as you are, uh, they're going to notice you. So yeah. a lot of what we have, we have 15 or so. I think we have uh, 15 four-star better this year in Mississippi that are rated already. Uh, some of the three-star players in that 24 class are very close to being four-stars. And then that junior class, you're already looking at 10 four-star or better players. And that's a lot given that most of these 15 kids – 15 is a bumper crop, yeah. four-star. Stars. Well, and it's I mean, just we may continuing. have two or three typically. Well, and that's right. And you have some, uh, I mean, really good players that everyone wants. If you go through the list of who's who in the the top 15 in that 24 class, it's uh, it, it's something to see. If you look at it on a per capita basis, too, Gerard, it's something to me that's always uh, fun to look at because you want to compare – you know, we don't have a lot of people here. It's about 3 million people. Florida, 20-plus million. Texas, right. almost 30. And our uh, per capita – put out of guys going into big schools is uh, we, we double what they're doing. And, yeah. You know, so it, it, Dixon reading off last week all the Mississippi guys in the NFL, uh, I, I really was just blown away at how many we have. You don't realize that. Yeah. They come out of the high school ranks, you know. Yeah. So that, that's where they get their start. JUCO, uh, another where you see the best football junior college-wise in the country. And you wonder why? Because we have such great players. And we have a great system here. The 14 or so teams, they are tough. You don't want to play any of those guys if you're coming in from out of state. So loaded with Mississippi talent. The Mississippi schools seem to be doing pretty well this year. Mississippi State, Ole Miss, Southern has a very good four-star commitment as well from a defensive lineman. So things are on the up and up. And I think we're going to continue seeing this type of production with the talent coming out. I think the coaching's yeah. there, the systems are there, and you're starting to see the camp circuits and things working and really just the talent starting to rise. I- anything that uh, would be recognized or that has stood out as a result of changing the classifications? You know, it, it is definitely challenging <laughs> for us on this side to you get used to something after a couple of years <laughs> and then you change it. Uh, the 7A classification has 23 teams playing in it. Uh, Murrah is a 7A classification from attendance. and But as far as from the football side, they play in a open district. So Murrah's undefeated in that open district. They haven't played any 7A teams yet. Uh, but that's an oddity there where you have 24 that are that made the cut for 7A. One of them in Murrah is the 24th team, and they're not playing in the 7A ball. So yeah. that's the most notable thing, I think, out of all of them. Well, it uh, will be interesting to watch as the season progresses. Yeah, and, hey, as Dixon says, as the weather, as the temp drops, the, the action heats up. That's and right. It's starting to heat up. <laughs> that's right. Lance, appreciate it. Thanks oh, my for coming pleasure. in. Yep.
We're stepping aside for a break right here in the Element Well studio. We got Kelly Bennett coming up at 1120 with Super Talk Mississippi News. And then at 1205 today, it's Ty Pinkins. That uh, would be the candidate for Mississippi Secretary of State as a Democrat. We, uh, we want you to stay with us. We're coming. 